Chase Roberts. Love that touchdown catch. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards Protection for a Life Worth Living. Learn more at Bodyguards.com. A five-win season? Yikes. No, no. Bill Connolly, stats man, great dude, friend of the program, joined us yesterday and gave us some great insights. Based on his projections, I asked him, what does number 62 in the SP Plus mean in terms of a win-loss record? And he said, well, it equals five wins based on my numbers. Jerem, is BYU better than a five-win team next season going into the Big 12? We'd like to think so, Spence. Uh, five won't cut it. Uh, bowl game, always the minimum threshold. We'll never be like, you know what, four and eight was good. Uh, no. <laughs> Can you imagine? Five and seven, unacceptable. Yeah, not four and eight. Yeah. Not for this program. Now, uh, Utah, when it went into the Pac-12, uh, went five and seven two of the first three years. They were eight and five that second year. BYU is better suited to enter the Big 12 than Utah was in the Pac-12 because BYU has played independence and played these schedules that at the time I thought were too tough for no reason. Well, when you're entering the Big 12, you're ramping up, right? And BYU the last couple of years has played some tough schedules. They weren't Big 12 schedules, they weren't Power 5 schedules, but they were as hard as they could be without being an actual Power 5 team because as an independent, BYU could play the schedule it wanted. It played tough schedules. They weren't a Mountain West uh, schedule like the past where you play two or maybe three P5s max in a season. BYU was playing up to seven some years, five and six the last couple, right? I think, um, like we've talked about, I I've said, hey, if BYU makes a bowl game, that was, that was a good first year. A good, you've said, hey, seven and five, right? Five would not be acceptable. So that's what Bill's projecting. But the great unknown, and there's lots of unknown going into next season on offense in particular with some of the primary playmakers. And Keaton Slovis, of course, at quarterback. Can he be 2019 USC Keaton Slovis uh, in this offense? And with his health, his shoulder's good, his back's good. Aiden Robbins out of UNLV expected to be RB1. It's really the defense to me, Spence. Mm. We don't exactly know how much better BYU will be, but I guarantee it, you'll like the way the defense looks, is that BYU is going to look better. New defensive coordinator with Jay Hill. New staff. They probably can't be much worse. That's not to offend anybody on the BYU defense. They just haven't been very good the A last two years. A defense that's ranked basically 100th out of 130-plus teams, not great. No thanks. Um, 79 in SP Plus defensively two years ago, 95th last year. We're just asking for top half. We're ta asking for top 60 probably. And if the offense is what it uh, has been the last couple years, which is, hey, uh, top 50, top 40-ish, then yes, BYU should exceed that five-win uh, uh, number. But they've got to do it. They, got, they have to go out and do it against the toughest schedule, uh, you know, BYU's had in a while in terms of, not in terms of uh, perhaps uh, quality, because you could argue there are some years in the past, even in the Mountain West, where BYU played some real quality teams, non-conference, you stack them up, you're like, hey, number one USC has been on the schedule, number five so-and-so. It's top to bottom this is the toughest schedule in BYU history because 10 P5. 100%. I want to play a couple of sound bites from yesterday's conversation with Bill, beginning with exactly what he said about BYU being a five-win team. The average win total that I'm looking at right now is around five. Big variation in, in potential here, though, because uh, not a lot of sure losses. You got the, the extremely likely wins at the start. Not a ton of sure losses. Just a lot of games where BYU is a slight underdog. And that's why mm. I love that he clarified it in that way. It's not as simple as just, yeah, five wins. But yeah. there are so many games on the schedule that he is projecting will be close games. He later specified a home game against Texas Tech a home game against Iowa State. Those games, if they swing BYU's favor, then very quickly BYU is a six or seven win team. You just And he, he also pointed out the home game against Cincinnati. Yeah. Those are all going to be so closely contested, at least by the numbers going in, that if BYU can win some of those games, then again, we're talking about, yeah, bowl eligibility mm -hmm. or a seven win team. Or even eight. If, if one score games are a big deal, Spence, like, when you look at the, the seasons where BYU had some real success, they won a lot of those close games. TCU unbelievably played a ton of close games and won all of them <laughs> but one, and then they had to blow it uh, in the national title game, of course. But, like, you have to win tight games. Last year, BYU wins in overtime uh, against Baylor. They lose a one-score game against Notre Dame. Yeah. They lose 
a one-score game against ECU. They win a one-score game at Boise State. They win a one-point game against SMU. Those t a swing a season. It's really important to pull off tight wins. Now, you can make games not one-score games by being terrible or being better, um, by putting the pedal down, by beating a team by multiple scores. Yeah, what if a few of those games that BYU played in that ended in wins swing the other way? Now we're talking about a 6-7 and seven team. Yeah. It's Very a totally easily. different rhetoric. Or a 9-3 and three team in the regular season yeah. if you beat Notre Dame. That's a right? credit to BYU for winning and the whatnot. majority of those close games last year and what feels like the majority of those games in the recent years. So, yeah, that, that's a good trend for BYU yeah. to have. Can they keep it in the Big 12? And I, like you, tend to think, well, clearly BYU's defense just needs to be better to help win some of those close games. Yeah. But I asked Bill again, all right, based on the numbers, where do you think BYU could beat the statistics and the projections going in? This is what he said. So I can see, um, you know, the projected 42nd. I could see a top 30 offense coming Ooh. out of that. And like I said, if you can if you can exceed projections just a little bit, that could pay off with a number of uh, – that could tip a number of close games overall. Now, Jerem, he said, look, I know Jay Hill's coming in. And I think that BYU's defense could be better, but I feel more it better be better. I feel more confident that BYU's offense would exceed expectations than the defense exceeding expectations. So he's putting more trust in Keaton Slovis and Aiden Robinson, all the guys you just talked about like, a few moments ago. The just, receivers. Yeah, yeah. The offensive line has some spots to fill, but there's still a core group there led by Connor Pay and Kingsley Suomataia. And Paul so, Miley comes in on that yeah, line, which is there's, there's experience yeah, there. Yeah. So I thought that was very interesting that he leans yeah. toward the offense, which is, hey, 42nd is not terrible. That's top third of college football. I'd be okay with that in the Big 12 in year one. I really would. But he says 82nd for defense. That's his projected end of year number? Yeah. Is that what he's saying? Can BYU be better than that? I just want top half. Give me yes. 66. Top Top 60, yeah, 66 great. short, Get, repeating, right of Right in the middle. Give me 66, and if BYU even holds at his projection on offense of 42, then they're going to win seven games. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay, the, and here's where the argument comes down to. The unknown of Jay Hill as a D1 coordinator versus the known of Aaron Roderick as a D1 coordinator and what is Keaton Slovis, what is Aiden Robbins, um, and so on and so forth. Offensively, Aaron Roderick is one of the most proven OCs in the game right now. The last couple of years, BYU's been tremendous. Look back at last year. You think about the offense and, and what they did or didn't do in certain times. Um, EPA, expected points added, that defines the value of each pl play on the likelihood to score. This is an emerging metric in football. BYU was 19th offensively in EPA last year. 17th in offensive success rate. That is, you get a certain percentage of yards on a certain down towards a first down, right? BYU 17th. And that was 22. 21 was really good. 20 was even better. Granted, 20 is a big asterisk year, right? Given the schedule, BYU did great with what they could. The last three years, Aaron Roderick has done awesome stuff. He's producing NFL quarterbacks. BYU is putting up points. They're, they're in the metrics that matter. They're doing good things. Obviously, there's room for improvement. We talked about it ad nauseum. Defensively, BYU was 112 in EPA. Yikes. Just really, really bad. I believe the offense is going to be better than expected. Okay. If it's 42, I think they'll be top 40. E even in the Big 12, that's the hope. Even if it's a few spots. Even if it's a few spots. And let's say they're not. Let's say they're 50th on offense. Okay. You're in the Big 12 and playing 10 P5s. It's a different standard. Defensively, BYU's got to be... Uh, you can't be 95th again. Notably better. You can't be 95th You've again. You've got to improve 20 or 30 spots to be in a bowl situation. Now, here's the thing. BYU's entering the Big 12. The, the, the thing with Big 12 ball has always been, it feels like, the last couple of years, it's going to be shootouts, okay? So the defense, the, some of those numbers against a tougher schedule and style of play, because let's be honest, BYU's built more like a Big 10 team than a Big 12 team, meaning speed on the perimeters, secondary, chase them, outscore them. Um, and not to say BYU hasn't done that in a couple years, but BYU has a physical big offensive line, quality run game, doesn't turn it over. Like BYU is more like a Big Ten team traditionally um, the last couple years. This isn't the 80 where BYU's throwing for 400 yards a game. 
You know what I mean? Like no, we want it that, to be that. That is what the Big 12 is most of the time. Not every team is that way. They have some good ground games still. But, like, BYU is going to have to win multiple games where they give up 30-plus a game. Multiple games. Like, Toledo 2016 going to happen a little more than, than you think. But it's, fun, it's, it's uh, entertaining uh, visually. But the defense is going to stress the heck out. Now, I'm sure some of you are like, okay, well, does the SP Plus really resonate? Does it really matter? I just want to go back over the past three seasons and, and where BYU started yeah. and where they finished in this metric. Yeah. In 2020, and again, this is with an asterisk because sure. the schedule got wiped out and BYU played who they could play. Their and toughest great. opponents were Houston, Boise State, and UCF. Coastal, I would argue, was Coastal tough. was also a good team. Coastal was the toughest opponent. Okay. 2020, BYU started at number 53 in the SP+. Plus. They finished number seven. Really B good. BYU was one of the best teams in the country in 2020 by the metric. 2021, 10 and 3, 5 and 0 against the Pac 12. Started number 52 because they lost Zach Wilson and yep. Dax Millen, five draft picks. Yep. They finished 46. So a six spot jump was still good enough to give BYU 10 wins on the season. It's not everything. It's not a top 25 ranking. But it's something. It's something. There's still I, some improvement I, from where they were projected. I value SP Plus more than I do any ranking. I agree. It's a metric that matters a lot to me. Yes. It's not an opinion poll. It's based on uh, data. It is a quality efficiency metric yeah. for offense, defense, and special teams yeah. and returning production and all that. 2022, BYU starts number 23. So we're all feeling good. Super high. Number one in the country in returning production. Yeah. They finish number 70. A 47 spot drop yeah. to eight and five. Bill joked yesterday, he's like, BYU broke the metric. <laughs> <laughs> they, they somehow they beat the system. Somehow they in the wrong eight. way. BYU is supposed to go five and eight with those numbers, probably. Yeah, weird, right? You win a couple close games. Start number sixty-two. If BYU finishes, let's say they do what they, the twenty twenty-one squad did, and they just finish plus six. They finish fifty-six. Defense is somewhere in the low seventies. Offense is around forty. They're a bowl team, and there's they're getting better again. So that's what I am expecting BYU to do. I don't, I don't know which side of the ball is going to be better. We both hope that it's defense and in a major way. Well, overall or above expectation? Based on this expectation, I hope the defense, again, middle of the pack, 66. This is BYU. I always hope the offense is better. And the offense Every year. at 42, we're hoping that they're a top 40 offense. Yeah. Is that too much, is that too much to I hope I think for? in the Big 12, you want your offense to be better than your defense. Because you're going to have to outshoot some people. I don't hate that idea. Yeah. And this is BYU. What we do is offense. It's what <laughs> we do. But defensively, BYU's had some really skilled players and some really good defense over the years as well. Here's a question to think about. Maybe we'll answer this in the whip. What's more likely for BYU to be a top 30 offense next season, year one of the Big 12, or to win five games and go the opposite direction? Okay. I love it and hate it. <laughs> Our question of the day is this. Based on Dang. Bill Connolly's projections, yep. Is BYU better than a five-win football team next season? Please! Ben Peterson on Twitter says, I believe BYU can get more than five wins. Mm -hmm. It really depends on how well the new quarterback, Keaton Slovis, 100%. and running back, Aiden Robbins, fit in and play. Yep. BYU is going to make the biggest difference. Oh, sorry. Those players are going to make the biggest difference in what kind of season it will be for BYU. Certainly, they are spotlighted in a way that uh, you know, Ben Bywater and Malik Moore are not. Um, because they influence the game in a way that, that those guys can influence. Like Ben's like, I'll just pick six it if we need to win this game uh, and get seven points. Like that helps in that game for sure. But like Aiden Robbins needs to be better than Chris Brooks, and Keaton Slovis needs to be 80% of what Jaron Hall was. He needs to hold on to the ideal of not turning the ball over, which BYU has really done a nice job with the past few years. I hope he's that guy. I'm like BYU just produced two NFL quarterbacks. Maybe that's part of the reason is, is that particular metric. But uh, Keaton can do other things that he does well mm. to make up for that. I'm, ex I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, blanket statement, generalized. <laughs> I'm just excited. 